Millions of years ago, there was an animal on earth that every living thing was terrified of. When it moved, it made the ground shake. But there was one creature that wasn't afraid of it. The fly. Flies have been around planet Earth for a very long time, around 240 million years ago to be exact, and they have no intentions of going extinct. One of the best forms of fossil that shows ancient insects, especially flies, is amber, which we've made a video about. In the last 240 million years that these flies have lived all over the globe, they have turned into different shapes and sizes everywhere they live. And humans have yet to figure out how many flies we have around the world. There are thousands of different flies that look mildly different from one another, but they are all around the same type of insect. But the ones that you and I are familiar with is one type of fly and it's called the house fly. The average size of these flies is around six to seven millimeters, so not too large. And if you would like to know the difference between the male and female ones, the female ones are fatter and shorter, but the male ones are skinnier and taller. And the main reason the female ones are fatter is because they carry the eggs and they usually have a lot of eggs inside them at any given time. The most interesting part of a fly's body is its eyes. And the type of eyes is called the compound eye. You can only find this type of eye on insects, like dragonflies, bees, and of course flies. And if you're interested, we have made a video about dragonflies as well. Unlike the human eye, a compound eye has thousands of different lenses. And even though the resolution or the quality of the eye is not that clear, but it's extremely fast and it notices a difference in color movement quicker than any other eye. And that is why with the slightest movement around it, it notices it and escapes. And that's why it's very hard to kill it with a fly swatter. The fly has so many lenses in its compound eye that what you and I see is going to seem slow motion to this insect. So that's why its reaction time is tremendously fast. Alongside other insects like dragonflies and bees, flies have the fastest ones out of all of them. This insect loves eating liquid because it cannot eat solid. When it's sitting on top of something that looks solid to you and I, it's pretty much sucking up all the liquid of that food. It doesn't have teeth to chew and there's nothing solid that could fit in its mouth. So its mouth has a straw that sucks anything. How do humans taste food? It's with the help of our nose and our tongues, which are called taste buds. But a fly is completely different because its taste buds are located on its feet. When it lands anywhere, it starts tasting with its feet and realizes if it's worth to stay or not. All living things like their own type of food, like humans tend to love meat, lions like zebra meat, snakes like to eat rats, but flies love sugar. It's not just powder sugar, anything that has sugar inside it and it's in a form of liquid the fly goes crazy for it even a damaged piece of fruit you could see flies flying around it and trying to eat it you've probably seen clips of different flies rubbing their hands together when they've landed somewhere it seems like they're thinking about an evil plan but the reason they do this is to clean their hands so their taste buds that is located on their feet and hands can work better and detect the taste better. You've probably seen a fly walk around on the ceiling without even falling. But how is this possible? If you look at its feet underneath the microscope, this is how it looks like. It has two tiny claws. And these claws are so small and tiny 
and the fly weighs so little that when it lands on the ceiling, it digs into the ceiling a little bit and it could stay there and walk around. The fly has an actual long lifespan. It lasts 28 days. You might say that's not long, but for an insect, that's pretty long. A female fly throughout its life lays 500 eggs. So it tries to drop as many as possible and then die. But where do they lay these eggs? It lays it in a very special place, on top of animal feces, very disgusting areas, rotten food, rotten dead flesh, and other disgusting things. If that area is disgusting enough, the eggs are going to survive and they're going to be fully born and they could be full adults. But if it's not, they will die. So can it lay eggs in a cleaner area? No, because the eggs that are being laid and when they're eventually going to be born, they're gonna need a food source. And these kids do not have a mother or father watching over them anymore. So they have to survive on their own. And if there is not a food supply when they're born, they will not survive. So if you have a very clean environment around you, you're most likely not gonna see a lot of flies. This insect is actually very durable, but as long as the weather is warm, its biggest enemy is cold weather, and it cannot do anything, not even fly. Also, its eggs do not hatch in the cold weather. Like in an environment where it's 35 degrees Celsius, the eggs can be born as little as two days. But if you're in an environment where it's 14 degrees Celsius, the chances of the babies being born is quite low. And if they actually do become being born, it takes more than 30 days. So the most important thing for this insect is hot weather, especially hot and dry. Like the Middle East, North Africa, west of the US. But the highest density of flies you can find is in Australia because there's a lot of hot, dry places in this continent. But it's not mainly in the areas people live. If you closely pay attention to a fly, you realize how much of a disgusting insect it is. Since it only consumes liquid, it's always leaving feces around. So whenever it lands, it actually drops feces, even though you cannot see it physically. And it is because of this reason that it could pass around bacteria and virus everywhere quickly. It sits on a feces of an animal, picks up the bacteria, then it goes lands on somebody's food, leaves its feces, and somebody eats it and gets that bacteria. The chances of a fly carrying a bacteria and a virus is quite high. It's always hanging around disgusting areas. So what's the point of living for this insect? When a female fly is born, it only has a one goal, to drop as many eggs as possible. And its entire goal is to leave as many as his own kind before dying. When it leaves that many eggs, it can leave in peace. On the other side, the male fly is only looking for mates so they can fertilize their eggs. So the life of a fly is basically produce as many as themselves as possible, then die. How big and small are flies? There are plenty of different sizes, but this is one of the biggest ones. A fly called the horsefly or tabanide. This could be as big as 25 millimeters, around four times the housefly. And anywhere the horsefly goes, you could hear it from afar away. It has such loud wings that it shows itself quickly. The life of a horsefly or tabanide is not that different from a housefly. It always hangs around disgusting areas. The second largest one is this type of fly, called the flesh fly. The flesh fly could be as big as 23 millimeters, so it's not that small. The other ones like juice. This one likes flesh, but not the flesh itself. It likes the juice of the meat that drops around it. That might be one of the reasons it's larger, because it's getting a lot of protein.
Are flies dangerous? They're mostly dangerous because they're usually carrying bacteria and viruses. But we have a type of fly that is very dangerous, the CC fly, that could only be found in this area, Central Africa. The CC fly sucks the blood of its prey, and instead of saying thank you, it leaves a parasite in that person or animal's body. A parasite that could cause fevers, headaches, muscle ache, and finally, it could make you very sleepy. If you don't get the carrot you need immediately, it could cause a person to die. But unfortunately, the CC fly is in a location where people don't have proper access to medical care. So a lot of people that get stung by this fly will die. So we only said bad things. Is there anything good about flies? Even though it's a disgusting insect, there are good things. First of all, it's a type of pollinator. And the other one is that by eating a lot of bacterias, and the other one is that by eating a lot of bacterias, it controls its own population, kind of like vultures, which we've made a video on. I would have never thought that flies could do something useful on planet Earth, but the negatives are much higher than the positives. So theoretically, if it's no longer around, it's not gonna damage anything. But either way, we are forced to live with them. We have to keep our environment clean and the chances of confronting a fly is much lower in an area like that. But if you live in a cold area, you won't have to deal with these little insects. 